<laughs> I don't know where they come from. Where does Dan Fogelberg fit in to your picture? You've produced one of his albums, right? Well, Irving, our manager, uh, knew this guy in Illinois. And uh, he played me some songs that Danny had done. I never heard Danny before, but I really did. I really did freak on that one. I really thought that. The songs were brilliant and I could help get his brains on tape somehow. I don't know if it, you know. Well, I think it would. Yeah, that's when I met Henley. Henley got in from a nonstop flight from London and came over to do the session on, <laughs> on Better Change or something. He was out of his mind and I was too, so <clears throat> that worked out real good. <laughs> 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 and, and from there, there's uh, you and Glenn both helped out on the Fool's Gold album, which is Fogelbo's backing group. Isn't yeah. It? Same sort of reason. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we helped out, huh? Yeah, we did. <laughs> no. we did. You cut. You did it. Yes, yeah, right. You produced. Uh, you produced that rock, hard rock and roll track yeah. in the album. I, I think I ended up doing two or three right. things on that Fool's Gold album. Those guys are real good singers. I had a good time. Yeah. Doing that. Uh -huh. See, right around there, we all got real, real busy. All we've been crazed ever since. We don't have a lot of time to yeah. go work with other people, and that, that's real rewarding. It's fun to do. But uh -huh. All we can say is that we kind of helped out. Glenn really actually did. Yeah. I don't spend a lot of time with him. So you're not about to start producing anybody else at this stage? I haven't found anybody yet. Uh -huh. I really haven't. How about your solo career? As a, an album due soon, I gather. Hmm. <laughs> I got about a half an album done on very basic tracks. I'm in no hurry, and uh, I really have to say that I'm an eagle first. Hey, Joe, I think your solo career is going great. Yeah, it's going fine. <laughs> are, there, are the rest of the eagles on the on that record? They're going to be. They're going to be. Yeah. You know, we just got off a tour, and I had a couple weeks period of time so I ran down to Miami and threw some basics down and I didn't want to say hey come down and help me because it was a period of time off for everybody else mm -hmm. but when we get into uh, arranging of course you know I'm some vocal coaching and stuff and uh, Felder probably come down put on some clams yeah. <laughs> 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 so it's going good it's kind of dormant <clears throat> and I'm an Eagle first. Did you give any great thought to joining the Eagles when the offer was made to you? Or did you just say yes? Both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to have seen you. <laughs> um, well, you know, we had known each other for a good year before anything came down. And, uh,. We all felt, I, all, I always felt that it was compatible, which was, uh, you know, a lot of people said, well, this, how can this work? But having hung out and known them all and, you know, worked with everybody individually on various projects, I thought it would work. There was really no doubt in my mind, and I wanted to, I wanted to join real bad. Mm -hmm. You had no worries about uh, forgetting about your solo career at that stage? Mm -hmm. I mean, solo career is glorious and all that, but put out two or three albums and be the boss and make all the decisions and hire and fire all yourself, and the emphasis comes off the music. Yes. And I just wanted to take a sabbatical and go play some music, which is what I'm doing. All right. Okay, thanks very much. Welcome. Felda. Felda. I want to hear this. Right, oh, Felda, okay. move on. <laughs> okay. I'm right in thinking you're from Florida. Yes, uh-huh. And that uh, you hung around with the Allman Brothers at some stage. Yeah, there were a bunch of people that were in and out of Florida and south uh, Georgia that were, uh, became later famous or pretty well known in the music, music business. And all the people that were out of there, like the Allman Brothers, and uh, we were in a band down there uh, called the Spotlights that played all the clubs on Daytona Beach and stuff. And... Uh, Butch Trucks, who was finally in the Allman Brothers, was in another band that worked a lot of fraternity parties and stuff around uh, Gainesville and the college area. So there's a lot of people that were in and out of that uh, vicinity that became well-known later down the line. Including Bernie. 
Yeah, Bernie lived there for a while. We, I ran into him in high school, and uh, we put a band together there for about three years or so. With David Mason as well? Yeah, but well, it's a different David Mason than, yes, I know, than I the know English David. the one that's with Jackson, right? Yes, uh -huh. David Mason was in that band for a while. And uh, David Mason was actually in a band, one of the first bands I was in when he was like 12. I think he was 12 or 13. He, he had a little Lowry portable organ, you know, that kind of folded up with the little vibrato pedal on the... <laughs> on the foot pedal, you know, and he couldn't carry it out of his house, so we had to come over and carry it out of his house for him and stuff. And uh, that band was called, which was the first band, which was called the Continentals, which was uh, a pretty greasy band at the time, you know. <laughs> but gosh, for junior high school, you could make, you know, some good weekend money and stuff doing that and have a good time. Stills was in that band for about eight months at the time. And, uh, <laughs> that was years ago, about 14, 15, something like that. So yeah, I hung out with Tom Glaze. Yes, you taught him how to play Jerry and the Pacemakers songs. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Have you interviewed Tommy? No, before? I haven't. I've just read this. So oh, okay. <laughs> he hasn't been here yet. Sure. Sure. Uh -huh. He comes uh -huh. soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh huh. I hear about a band called Flow. Yeah, that's that like happened that. later down the line. There was a band. Uh, well, after the Continentals, I guess. The next thing that happened was Bernie hit town, and uh, Stephen left town, and Bernie came to town. So there weren't that many people right around the general area that you know were available to organize another band. So Bernie and I put together a band, which started out that lasted to be about three weeks because we had our first gig, and the new lead singer's mom was half a seamstress, so she made us all these little jackets, you know, and stuff. And we went out and did a bunch of gigs for about the first three weeks, and it had a name. The first three weeks' name was called the Pink Panthers, which was Mm, you know, typical, which later became the Monday Quintet. And I was just trying to phone uh, the lead singer. I can't remember the first single record we did under that that name, which was the first 45. I, I think my mom still got a closet full of you know. <laughs> But uh, um, uh, that lasted with Bernie was in that band and a fellow named Tom Long. And uh, it was a pretty big band in Florida, and we toured around the southeast there. And... Uh, uh, at the time the Beatles were happening and the Rascals were happening, they were organized and managed out of New York by a guy named Sid Bernstein. When they came through town on a tour, they heard us and we did one of the opening shows for a band, one of those bands. And uh, um, he invited us up to New York for a club debut, which we packed it all in our van and drove straight through nonstop to New York and uh, did a debut, which went, ended up nowhere. And, uh, turned around and came back to Florida and Bernie at, at the end of high school got a call from some people in Hearts and Flowers which he knew really well and was really longing to move back to uh, California and uh, he and I parted at that point and I organized another band called Flo and we moved to New York and uh, starved to death and you know did the typical struggling thing and uh, whatnot in Manhattan which after about a year and a half and making one album under the name of Flo uh, with Creed Taylor and Creed Taylor Incorporated we, uh, I got rather disgruntled with the progress and the, the attitude of it and decided to, to go into a hibernation and retreat for about a year and a half or two years and uh, do some woodshedding, it's called, in the States, you know, where you go out behind the woodshed and get your ass together and, uh, <laughs> and then start off again. So I moved up around the Boston area, which there's Boston Conservatory of Music and Berkeley School of Music, a bunch of just freelance studios around there and did a lot of sessions and uh, just kind of hung out and, and played jingles and, you know, anything I could here and there to make some bucks and get by and, and played and jammed a lot, a lot of black R&B clubs and you know, things of that sort. Who did you play sessions for? Just anybody that was in town that would, you know, hire me. Uh, nobody, I guess, that you'd, that you'd uh, nobody be able significant. to... No, nobody really significant. Okay. A lot of jingles, <laughs> you know. Not, uh, yeah. not Orpheus or Ultimate Spinach or... No, <laughs> no. It was a bit later than that. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. And uh, so at that point, I'd, I'd stayed in contact with Bernie, and Bernie had, you know, been encouraging me through that whole period of time that I was in New York and Boston, and that I should... I should relocate in, in Los Angeles, that that seemed to be the prime music area in the United States, you know. So I uh, finally took his advice and packed it up and uh, popped out to L.A. and uh, landed there and had about $300 in my pocket and a guitar and one friend, you know, Bernie, and that was it. So here we go again for the second time, you know. First it was hit in New York and then second it was L.A. and just, you know, looking to keep plugging it to see what would happen. And out of that, I ran into uh, a job which I was at a point of sheer total desperation that was offered to me. I 
because it was it was either handling that job or maybe taking a straight job, which was the absolute last resort, you know, <laughs> for from a guy named David Blue. So I took the job for a while there, and he, fortunately he was under the same management as the Eagles. They sort of helped uh, recommend me for that job and stuff, which really helped a lot, you know. I got to know them and uh, Graham uh, Nash and some other people that were in that same man management office while I was working for David and. Uh, on one of the tours where we were opening for for uh, for a Crosby Nash tour, David and I were out. Lindley became ill and uh, was sent home. Their guitarist and I subbed for him for the rest of that tour. And out of that, the the response from that and a few other things that uh, uh, they called me down when they were in the middle of doing on the border to to do that one track, Good Day in Hell. And, uh, for some reason, they liked that a whole lot and asked me to join the band, so... <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Straight from Mars. It can't possibly be that simple. No, that's the way it is. No, it can't be. <laughs> right. Um, Don, can we uh, start again at... Uh, at sure. At 1972. 1972. Sure. That's easier to remember than last week. Uh, really? Um, how about the name, the Eagles? Uh, you mean where did it come from and how yeah. did we arrive at that name? Well, I don't know. We, for a lot of reasons, it was, it was really difficult to find a name that didn't sound ridiculous because at the time everything was strawberry this and electric that, you know? <laughs> So we wanted something simple, and we wanted something American, and we wanted something uh, that was easy to remember, and something with a little spirit.